when you open the door for somebody else. Welcome, everyone, to the Vaccine Conversation with Melissa and a temporarily gone Dr. Bob, who is retrieving some paperwork for our episode today on immunity and how to boost your immune system, how to keep your body strong so that you can fight not only things that we have vaccines for, but all of the other pathogens that we come across in our day-to-day basis. How do we stay healthy? Because as we know, covering everything with medicine is not the equivalent of health. And we have to make sure we are proactive in keeping the bodies of ourselves and our children strong. And that is not about what can we add on top of it to sort of attack a disease once it's here or an infection or an illness once it's here. Instead, we need to make sure that our body is in a position to handle without complication the kinds of things that can come our way. So you've been asking for this episode and we are going to bring it to you. We will probably have to do a few of these um, because there's so much great new information as it results, as it, as it relates to this. Yeah, but uh, first we're going to oh, read some act, reviews, don't right? Don't act like you were here the whole time. I told them. <laughs> they know. They already know that you abandoned the podcast in that moment. They're aware. and, they, and well, they're, I'm back. They're not going to forgive you for it either. <laughs> what I miss? Was it interesting? Oh, it was so interesting. Okay, right? So, so, so. Well, I wanted, I, can I just say real quick, 791 reviews. Oh, my gosh. As of really? right now. Wow. Right. And, and, and I only wrote 790 of those. So we've got at least one review that was from somebody else because I wrote the rest. That's awesome. That's what I do with all my time, by the way. I just create accounts, (laughs) write reviews, write reviews for us. Um, I... um uh, I love <laughs> my favorite thing is when you hear titles like this obsessed. That's the best. I'm so, and this, <laughs> I, this one says, I'm so in love with y'all's podcast and appreciate the honesty you're sharing with the world about vaccines and immunity. There's so much quality information in your talks. I've been able to send your podcast to friends who want information, but don't spend the time reading through the studies and the books to find all their answers. I could go on and on how much I love what y'all doing, what y'all are doing and how appreciative I am of your courage to speak out and learn the truth. That was so nice. And I get a version of that message probably four to five times a week from different people that send it on my own um, Facebook page. And every time I'm just floored. I'm always floored by, oh my gosh, this is really making a difference. Yeah, that's cute. Um, I like... um, uh Sorry, I'm, try, I'm trying to look down while I read. Okay, I'm going to hold this up. Right? Um, <laughs> by uh, your mom of five loves. Uh, I absolutely love this podcast. I love being able to share it with other parents. And that's what we really, really want people to do. Absolutely. You know, well, even share if they're not sharing everybody, you know, even if they're not sharing the link that they're sharing the information in their conversations, because any way you look right, at it, it's right, being shared. Right. Yeah, and easy listening meets serious information. Right. So I think uh, which one <laughs> is this? We're both I, both. You're I'm, both. I'm definitely easy listening. And, and I'm, <laughs> I'm serious information. Easy uh, listening to me sounds like the hold music while you're on on the phone somewhere and you're on hold. That's when I think of easy listening. That's like what I think of. It's like elevator music <laughs> playing in the background. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Anyone who knows me knows that's me, huh? Elevator music <laughs> in the background. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> no. You're not listening. I disagree. <laughs> no, I, I totally disagree. Well, I, I feel like uh, the last uh, episode, you were kind of very kind of calm, mellow. Uh, hey, it sort of Ma- was the elevator music this version. This is Melissa of, 2.0. Of Melissa. I get it, guys. <laughs> I know. Listen, you want to listen to something. You can't have somebody just like, you know, bada bing, bada boo. <laughs> can't, <be doing, laughs> can't be doing that all the time. So I'll, I'll try to. I'll yeah. try to. I'll try to work on um, the. Uh, more relaxed version no, of myself. No, sometimes, don't sometimes. Do don't do it. <laughs> Turn back. <laughs> right. I mean, there's so many we could read. I mean, okay, I, well, but, you're taking but, too but, long. But, so. but, well, no, I, I was waiting for you. But I just, I do want to say we actually have read each and every one of these reviews. I've gone through like every couple of weeks I'll go through and read all of them. So just everyone know that we are reading all of them uh, except for the Unless your review is ones. crap. If your review right. is crap, I'm not going to waste my time. But Tess from Ohio, yeah. she's not crap. All Look right. at this review. <laughs> Melissa, my soul sister. Remember, you sent me that one because I hadn't seen oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. sweet. She goes, this podcast, this is my favorite line. This podcast is everything I never knew I needed. I love that. She said, I binged this podcast until I got caught up, and now I look forward to the episodes as they come out. I'm the mother of a vaccine-injured child and a victim of patient coercion. 
Ooh, powerful. Uh, this podcast encouraged me to fire our previous doctor and seek care of a holistic provider. As a busy mom, I don't have time to read all the books, so a podcast format is ideal for me. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Mm-hmm. This podcast is so informative, entertaining, and inspiring. Melissa feels like my soul sister, and I appreciate her spirited and passionate presence. Aw. <laughs> Dr. Bob offers so many great insights, and it's clear his knowledge surrounding immunity and vaccination is vast. I am so grateful to you both for sharing your research with us and for putting yourselves out there, especially when having this opinion is criminalized in our modern society. Mm. You are so valued, and I'm so thankful for everything you've provided for us. Melissa, your bangs look great. (laughs) Tess from Ohio, thank you not just for the favorable review. Thank you for the time you took to, to write a thoughtful review. It wasn't even just a line or two. Yeah. She wrote a paragraph, which is time out of her day that she felt she wanted to let us know. And I appreciate you, Tess. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. this is a nice one. God's work. Did you see? Oh that yeah, one? I saw the one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that nice. Really a nice. mandatory listening. This is yes. the, this is this is the thing. I propose a mandate that everyone be required to listen to this podcast before posting misinformation on social media. And then it says, "Just kidding. <laughs> this is America, home of the free." or at least it used to be, and nothing should be mandated without informed consent. This podcast provides so much information. It's always entertaining. If only our politicians would listen to this. <laughs> so many really yes, smart, I like Yeah, I like AC14. I always listen to this on my way home from work, and I'm always singing. When you open the door, <laughs> jeez. Funny. Keep the humor so nice. and the facts coming. Love uh, the flow of your friendship and how it's easy to follow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this yeah, it's great, great. Uh, we we do appreciate it. Yeah, like I said, just we re- we read everyone, and um, we appreciate everyone. So thanks, you guys. And yeah, it's just amazing. We just did our fiftieth episode. Uh, we just published oh, yeah. a couple of days ago. Happy fiftieth! Yeah. I know. Happy 50th. Hey, let's cheers. You have yeah. cheers <laughs> too. Uh, I'll, I'll use your own water bottle. <laughs> I don't have. I'm my drinking water. my matcha. My right. And anyway, yeah. So anyway, yeah, appreciate that uh, and all the downloads. And what are we up to? Like two hundred and. 80,000 downloads or something crazy like that? It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so so excited. And you know what's funny is like every single time I get a new message or review like that, I'm always thinking like, um, it surprises me again as if it's the first time I'm getting one. Because it's like, yeah, does it feel like yeah, that to you? Sometimes yeah. you'll get a new review and you're like, oh, this is so nice. You're like, forget that there have already been like 400 that have said the same thing. <laughs> and, and it's like, because everyone is a yeah. new opportunity for somebody to say, oh my gosh, another person that felt like this was impactful. And we're not talking about people who say, love your podcast, keep it up. Or right, this right, is fun, right. cool. Like right. we're talking about people that say this changed my life in some way. Right. This impacted my life for the better. The better. This allowed me to come out of my silence on this issue and feel brave enough to talk. I mean, that type of review, that type of change and impact is like unreal. Where else in life do you get to do stuff that really matters to people that much? And again, it was never our intention to move mountains that way. Our intention was just to give information, knowing that information is powerful and that can help you, but uh, never on this level of emotional, you know, mental and, and, um, and physical change that we've seen through people and action and and stuff. So you guys are all totally 100% the reason why we do it. And you know what, maybe if we only got one review and never got one after that, maybe we would not be as excited to podcast when we do. But knowing that there are people that are so excited yeah. to hear something new on this, it makes me excited yeah. to be like, what should we talk about? And yeah. how, let's bring this to yeah. the table. Yeah. What about this? So that makes it more yeah. interesting too. But yeah, keep telling your friends. And and probably a great way to get a friend interested is probably pick your favorite episode, have them start there. You know, like like pick a specific episode that you think might speak to them because each one is, is very topical and mostly, you know, uh, targeted towards one idea. But anyway, yeah, keep spreading the word. We... We are just as thrilled as you all seem to be. So thank you. Um, and today I is... I told him. I know, yeah. I told him about the topic. I oh, gave, you did? I gave, I are gave you guys them. excited? I, they told me they were excited. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've read three reviews already that said they can't wait. <laughs> the, uh, I just gave them the uh, yeah. overview okay. of how they've been yeah. asking for this episode. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. learning some stuff from, uh, from Melissa because um, I will say... Um, 
Uh, I mean, as a doctor, I kind of know some natural stuff and some natural medicine, but um, it's been, I think, great to listen to you over these, you know, what, four years that I've known you, um, kind of the stuff you tell me you're doing and you're treating this with that. I'm like, well, what is that? I've never even heard of that. And all these little things you're doing with the kids that keep them healthy that, that I, that I had no idea about. And so I actually like learning from you. So I think a lot of this is going to be kind of your experience. Um, what you've learned you're with your and kids I, and then I I'll, printed out a I'll really cool show in what I, what I've learned as well. Yeah. And I printed out a cool article from Harvard medical school, Ooh, uh, that was really okay. interesting about how to boost your immune system. We're going to find some very interesting things that they say that we might might find parallels to. But, you know, I will say I think most parents who have had children that had vaccine reactions or vaccine injured have found themselves in more of a holistic lifestyle because of those reactions. So while I was Mm -hmm. always, like I said, I was in personal training and nutrition for seven years. um, And I was, (laughs) there's no way to do that quietly. Just hold on, guys. He's got to open a bar. Just let's just let's let it happen. I'm doing it under the table so people I, can't hear they it. They can totally still hear no, they it. Can't. So the uh, I've been in kind of alternative nutrition and alternative um, world as it relates to medicine and healing and all those things on a on a periphery, on the periphery of that, I think. And it wasn't until my daughter's experience where I started to look at healing that threw me into this world of holistic healing, the importance of diet and the gut and the brain connection and biomedical healing and things like that. And so most of everything that I've even come across, I'm coming across from other parents who have done the work and have had to experience different treatments and different things with their own children uh, because of reactions and trying to heal their own children. So I thank all of you parents that have led the way for everyone else from all of your hard work, led everyone else by learning things um, like the vitamin C protocol, which is one of my favorite things that we can talk about. Yeah. Uh, proper dosing of vitamin D, which I think is essential. Magnesium, including magnesium in your child's diet, especially if you've had vaccine injury and how important the, the gut and the bowel is. And then diet and how changes in diet really show up in behavioral differences with your children that have been injured and all children, but especially ones that have had um, had specific reactions. And I don't know if you've seen this as, sorry, that was the chair. I don't know if you've seen this. <laughs> People uh, could hear that. This is a voice, very so squeaky, totally like every time it. I try to move this thing, it's like, yeah. uh, uh. Um, you tell me if you've seen this to be the case, but, um, oh my gosh, where was I going with that? I don't know. I was just going somewhere with that. Ugh. <laughs> I lost it, guys. I lost Maybe it. Maybe we'll edit this out and you'll keep talking as if... You know, as if it kept going, no, who are we kidding? We hardly edit anything on this unless, <laughs> unless you curse all over the episode. Yeah, right? <laughs> I don't think I... I don't know you if I've know, ever heard you say... I don't think I have. You don't... Yeah, you don't You don't curse that yeah. much. And I go through phases. But I was going to say... Well, I don't know what I was going to say, but as it relates to diet, do you hear parents that come in and are dealing with vaccine injuries and um, healing their child's body. Do you hear about people talking about the importance of changing diet and how diet has made a big difference in the kinds of oh, symptoms yeah. and manifestations that their children have had? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I would say, and not even just you know children who have had vaccine reactions. I, I think it's all children. And, um, and I think for me, if there's anything I've learned over the years about diet, it's... Uh, um, basically I think the idea of very, very limited, if not even no, you know, processed sugar. Yeah. I mean, we can't emphasize yes. that enough. It's um, on my list. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's probably one of the, one of the most important steps you can, you can, you know, follow with your child. And okay. I guess everyone wants a treat, you know, but it, it doesn't have to be, you know, the artificially colored flavored, you know, candy treat from the store, you know, you can do homemade stuff. But it doesn't even have to be stuff. homemade with real sugar either. There are lots of other alternatives yes, alternative now, which, sugar. Right. you know me, I've been into yeah. baking for a long period of time. And so let's talk sugar. Yeah. Let's, let's be the, that'll be our first thing, right? right? Okay. Let's talk about how to have children with strong immune systems and have, have uh, exceptional health for them and for you. Sugar is absolutely one of the things that has to go. It has to go. If you're going to add, and I'm not talking about fruit, 
I'm not one of those extremists who thinks fruits shouldn't be included. I disagree with Mm -hmm. that completely. Um, I feel like a food in nature that is designed that way is something our body can tolerate and process. And obviously, if you're eating 20 bananas a day and nothing else, then maybe there'd be a problem over time. (laughs) Um, What are those fruitarians? That's an actual thing, right? Um, But sugar, and and we're talking about white sugar, cane sugar, even brown rice syrup, and which are considered you know natural versions of it. Any type of straight sugar. Uh, in my opinion, would be something that you want to eliminate from your child's life completely. And that's not, well, it's a birthday party. Let's just let them have ice cream. Like, um, and okay, so I, maybe I should take that back. Almost completely. Because there are some times like I will take my kids to get an almond milk gelato uh, in Laguna Beach. And I cannot alter that sugar that's there, but it's a half of scoop and they get it maybe twice a month. And that is the extent of the real sugar or a half a side car donut we might get uh, maybe once to twice a month. That is the extent of it. Everything else I try to make myself with an alternative sugar. So not just that it's homemade, but I try to really remove the sugar. Maybe using something like, I told you the recipes I use, use maybe a little maple syrup or a little honey. And then I replace even things like coconut sugar, which is lower glycemic index, lower raise on the insulin levels. Even something like that, I'll replace with swerve or monk fruit, something that has a zero or stevia, a zero sugar level as far as your insulin levels. Um, But it's sweet. And I will try to find that balance of Yes, we can have cookies, and I'm going to make them. In fact, I made the best cookies the other day, um, and a big part of those cookies. Thank you for oh, bringing some here, so Melissa, sorry. for me to try. <laughs> so sorry, Dr. I appreciate Bob. appreciate that. Uh, me so sorry. <laughs> you know how much I, I, I don't like don't homemade like cookies. cookies. I know. I don't like them. Well, the, I, I'm, I figured Cheryl's got you covered because she bakes oh, she for you all the time. Totally so does. yes. Yes, yeah. I can't waste my energy there. Her cookies are the best. Yeah, so I, in this particular recipe, uses a lot of cashew butter and... and mm-hmm. Um, almond butter as the fat source with some coconut cream, another fat source. And so it only uses a quarter cup of maple syrup in the entire recipe. And then I added the remainder with swerve. So we're still getting the good fats. We're getting nutrient dense food and reducing sugar. I think, I think personally why it's so important is it stresses the system out. Mm -hmm. It stresses the body. You see how children behave with sugar. I mean, sugary drinks, are you kidding? Like my children will never have a soda. They will never have fruit juice even because I think to myself, why? It's not necessary. Have a piece of fruit and have water. You know, they get water (laughs) um, and or they get, you know, almond milk or, or flax milk or something else that we're doing. Sugar to me... It's one of those things that, yes, we have all these positive associations with how they make us feel like we're, we're rewarding ourselves or treating ourselves. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's a hard thing to cut. But like, like you hear a lot of doctors talk about, you cannot start that habit with children early on because for many of us, we've already, it's a little far gone for us, right? Like we've already grown up in the reward yourself with an ice cream right. sundae or brownies or cookies because you've done a good job. And as an adult, when life gets hard, you want to reward yourself when when things are difficult because it makes right. you feel good. There's a lot of emotional connection to things like treats, Right. But as a parent, you are responsible for what your child gets. And you can absolutely change that trajectory because you can either make all of their things or make their rewards something that's not food related or not Mm -hmm. treat related. Mm -hmm. So the child doesn't get emotionally attached to needing that to feel like they've done a good job. And I think that's why Mm. we don't want to remove it from them because we feel like we're withholding happiness from them. (laughs) Right? Like I've heard heard people go, well, I eat pretty well, but I'm not going to punish the kid. They deserve to have ice cream every now and then. Right? You hear that kind of, this idea that I would be punishing them if I take this away. But the truth is, it's not supporting their body and their system to function very well, to function at its optimum, especially brain levels and then immune system strength. So if you can really kind of alter that early on, you're much Mm -hmm. better for it because the child is not going to associate needing that to feel happy. Right. And yeah. and but you don't have to take it away from them because you can still make the muffins and the cookies and the brownies and the cupcakes. You just do it in a way that supports their body, is still giving the nutrition to the body, and it might have a little bit of sugar, but it's being balanced at least with what else is in there. And then your child gets rewarded, you feel good as a parent, and added bonus, everyone, and the whole point of this episode is 
your child doesn't get sick as often because their body's not under attack with this type of stress that sugar right. can cause right. for the body. And and I'm sure you wanted to talk yeah. about sugar. I'm sure you have something to say well, about you, that. Well, part no, of it's just it. I mean, what you said is interesting about just making yourself feel better because I know. Honestly, at the end of a super hard day and it's, you know, 1030 at night and, and Charlotte and I are relaxing, I, you know, not every, of course, every day, but but somewhat often I'll say, oh, my gosh, I would just love to sit with a bowl of ice cream, you know, and, and you know, uh, chocolate sauce over the top and just chill and, and, and relax with that before bed because you're right, it we have that mindset that that's what's going to make us feel yes. good. And you've and worked hard, Dr. Bob, today. You deserve it, right? <laughs> yes, that's yes. This is the idea. You're right, right. We yeah. want to feel good yeah. in that moment. We've I got know. all these receptors going yeah, on. And, and, and those are patterns that we, we don't have to set our children up that way if right. we make these smarter choices from the beginning. Um, I mean, I wanted to say that I think what you're saying is the ideal. Um, I will say personally, as a family, we have not practiced that very strictly. You know, we, you know, all you know, Cheryl's recipes do include regular sugar. You know, we have mm. not, we have actually not. Oh, come I on. I know, isn't that terrible? Oh my God, Dr. Um, Bob, take the next step. You won't miss it. Well, but. <laughs> I'm telling you, there are such you're, amazing. You're talking to the wrong person okay. here, Melissa. Yeah. So yeah. Cheryl, check yeah. this out. I'll pass you some recipes. Listen, the. We've come so far with okay. what our alternatives are now than even when I was okay. teaching nutrition back, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. We've come so far at finding ways to hmm. make something almost taste like you're used to. Almost. No, though. I mean, but okay. it's close. Okay. It's really close. Right. I'll tell you, 15 years ago, it was a struggle. <laughs> and that's probably why a lot yeah. of people didn't grasp onto it. But today, with Swerve is an amazing... Uh, sugar substitute that they even have powdered sugar version and granulated sugar version and a brown sugar version. Oh. And then monk fruit oh. is also another option, which has a granulated and a brown sugar version. We know that stevia can be used, a stevia concentrate can be used in some things. I don't find it great for baking uh, personally, but I use it to sweeten lemonade. I don't, would never use regular sugar for that. And I would never even use maple syrup because you need quite a bit to kind of get okay. that sweetness. Yeah. There is so many, there are so many options at our fingertips now that have never been there before. If you've not made the switch, this is the time to make the switch. And I'll tell you, one of the, one of the websites I use is called paleorunningmama.com. Okay. I love every single one of her recipes, and she organizes her website in such an amazing way. She does everything, all different types of baked goods and even regular foods, and it's a paleo focus. She uses only coconut sugar and maple syrup. I substitute even the coconut sugar with one of the options I wow, just told okay. you, right. and you would never feel like you're missing out, and you could have all the fancy things that you want to have mm. only because they have that now. They didn't have that before, so if you've not made okay. the switch... Even you guys, I told, even if you do half and half for a while and work your way towards it, you will not regret it and not miss those, uh, the traditional sugar in there because uh, regular sugar, like any way you put it, there yeah. is just no data and no science to show <laughs> that it is supporting your system in any way. We have nothing but data and science to show that it is detrimental yeah. to your body. And yeah. so instead of just saying, well, we only do it every now and then, how about you can do it more frequently and switch out the sugar and you could have it every day if you wanted. Hmm. You could have it every couple of days. Um that is on your homework list. Okay, and you know well, what? Maybe you should try baking. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't always have to just be Cheryl. Maybe no, no, you could no, try no, doing I, some of it too. I, I, I do baking as All well, right. but uh, it's just so good. So I, I'll, I'll It'll be, still I, be so good. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you. I'll be I'll be honest. Since I'm 50, it's just so hard to make that change, uh -huh. right? But yeah. Hey, li Maybe life is about adapting. Yeah. And if I've not learned that more than ever yeah. in the last couple of weeks yeah. and the last couple of months is that yeah. life is about being able to adapt. And as we get better with information, yeah. like yeah, this yeah, food, yeah. we learn yeah. other ways to do things. Yeah. Well, I, I will say for <laughs> sure... Um, during your know, cold and flu season, and when I yeah. when I see kids who are getting sick very often, um, yeah. and uh, or they're getting like severely sick very often, like where they're always coming in the office, uh, yeah, absolutely, I will say, you got to take a complete break from yes. like from all those sugary treats, you know. You know, there's the Halloween candy, yes, the Christmas that time candy, of year, and, and the, Thanksgiving, yeah, and leading yeah, the up Easter to Easter candy. I, I mean, all <laughs> of that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, in some families, if you're a listener and your kids are really getting sick a lot, 
I mean, sometimes that is the single, possibly most effective step that you can. Didn't for sure I tell take. you when yeah. Serenity started school yeah. and she got sick the very first week? I was like, you know what? I've already been reducing. I'm cutting it. I'm cutting yeah, yeah, it and, completely and, and, yeah, and, for the next couple of months. And I will say, I remember, you know, we, <laughs> we talked a few times when, when your kids were sick, uh, you know, like several years ago, they have a cold or cough or whatever. And you kind of were, you know, you would call me and we'd talk about it. But I feel like you, you totally never call me anymore if they are sick. And, and or you might text me, yes, or anybody has a cold. But I never hear from you again about it because I, I, I assume your kids are working through these illnesses easily and they're they're milder they're 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 not getting them as often right and i mean justice of course is never sick um serenity gets colds but they're just colds they never really get more than that and and because of what we're utilizing for them um which the other big thing i'll say that is my the one thing i would tell every single person to get involved with and get on top of is vitamin d Right. And I'm not talking about going in the sun for 10 minutes because I truly believe it's not enough. Oh, oh yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. People, people think yeah. I get the natural version. I go in the sun. I'm like, no. well, you have to supplement with vitamin D. Right. It well, well so well, let's talk about sun, sunshine first. I would say oh. um, since vitamin mm. D is a hormone, um, it's, not, it's not even a vitamin. It's a hormone. And we all get it by the sun shining right on our skin without suntan lotion on. So you, you don't want a sunburn. But if you can get – a healthy amount of sun every day without sunburning on as much as your skin as you can. Just like fifteen and minutes. I, no, I'm talking hours. 20? Oh no, if if oh, you want. Oh, you're saying it. in increments. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. Fifteen, twenty, thirty minute increments, or even even a couple hours at the beginning of the day or the end of the day. You got to spend time outside with as much of your skin exposed without burning. Right. And that's by far the <clears throat> healthiest way for your body to generate vitamin D as a hormone um, from your from your skin exposure. But you are right. We don't get enough of that. Mm-hmm. And so I think we are left with also supplementing. I, I know for me personally, and I can say this is an anecdote. Um, we know how people criticize anecdotes. But listen, the only supplements I was taking for several years, the only two things, I don't take a multivitamin. I don't take it. The only things I were taking were vitamin D and magnesium. Okay. Magnesium as a nervous system calmer as a way to help anxiety, things like that. And uh, vitamin D as a preventative for illness. Mm -hmm. I did not get sick for six years, not even a cold. Wow. (laughs) When did I get sick? When I stopped taking vitamin D. Now, Mm -hmm. I did this accidentally, not on purpose. I sort of just stopped remembering to take it in the morning Mm -hmm. for a month or two, and it was right around November when everybody starts to get sick, and I got sick the first time. And it it was bad. And... Um, I had never um, gotten that kind of illness, and I had never not been taking my vitamin D. You think I'm lying, but after that illness, I started my vitamin D again, and I have not been sick since, and it's been a year and three months. Oh, cool. And because my body will feel like it's starting to get something, but it never goes there. Because, yeah. And I'll tell you what exactly what I do when I start to feel something coming out. I'll tell you exactly what I do. But before I do anything as a preventative, I take 5,000 vitamin D a day. If I forget, I'll take 10,000 the next day. Oh, yes. Can yeah, and that, yeah, that's that? the thing about vitamin <clears throat> D is um, you can actually take a whole week's worth, like even once a week. It's a fat-soluble vitamin, so you want to take it with a meal. You want to take it like when you've eaten some fat, or a lot of vitamin Ds will come as an oil. Yeah. And so it's, it's absorbed better that way. But, yeah, if you forget several days, you can catch up. And your body will still utilize all that. And I do the same thing for my kids who can swallow vitamins now. Mm -hmm. And vitamin A um, capsules are very small. They're usually circular or small um, in an oil, like kind of capsule if you don't do drops. Yeah. Or you you can buy drops. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, like one of my favorite drops is basically the the ingredients is olive oil and vitamin D. Very simple. And you want to, if you're giving it to infants or young children, you want to buy a kind that I think. Every dose is just one drop, so there's not a bunch of fillers and sweeteners. Where yeah, you're just it's just an oil drop mm. as 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 your one you know daily dose. So if you have to give a week's worth, it's only say seven drops. But there's not a bunch of sweeteners and fillers and artificial ingredients in there, or like a chewable vitamin D where right. there's sweeteners there that are going to get into your teeth. It's so easy to give as as a drop and then move on to capsules when you're. 
older. Well, and luckily, in my case, like I got them kind of swallow. I mean, even Justice oh, cool. can swallow things. He could it too. Wow. Like I would say, okay, wow. it's time for your vitamin D. That's and he cool. likes taking, but he likes this idea okay. of uh, it's like a, a a treat for him to be able to. Oh, right. we get to have vitamins. Okay. And the only thing I will give him, I give Serenity Magnesium for her issues, and um, I give vitamin D. Uh, that's it for Justice. All he needs. <laughs> and okay. so vitamin D. I and I and I give higher than what you know what we consider the traditional yeah. recommendation is very low. So oh, yeah. I, most people think, oh, I take vitamin D every day, and my multivitamin is like a thousand. I use. Um, I take five to 10,000. If people around me are sick, I yeah. will be taking 10,000, sometimes a little more for those couple of days. Yeah. And um, with my kids, I almost, I mean, I, I probably remember every three or four days with them and I'll give them like 5,000 uh, yeah. over those three yeah. to four days. Yeah. Or like if somebody is, if somebody's sick around, I might give them two if it's been a week or something. <clears throat> and I have found vitamin D to be the single best preventative supplement to keep your immune system strength that I think immune system strong that I think every, this is my personal non-medical opinion, but that I think every single person should be incorporating into their routine. If you do nothing else, Mm -hmm. that is literally could be the one, I mean, of course, diet wise, removing sugar is very important too, but vitamin D is crucial, 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 crucial to prevent. I'm not talking about you get sick and now you start taking vitamin D. No, I'm talking about this is something in your system all the time Mm -hmm. to keep you from getting sick or to keep your illness from actually going somewhere if if you do start to feel something going on. And so when I start to feel something coming, here's what I do. Um, I will start taking, this is my other big secret of the uh, vitamin C protocol. I'll start taking some sodium ascorbate powder, Mm -hmm. a couple doses throughout the day in water or something and start giving my body higher levels of vitamin C. I've Mm -hmm. already got my vitamin D going. I will reduce the sugar If I've had any, I will be like, okay, you know, uh, definitely not having anything right now while my body is fighting. Sleep, which is another thing we'll talk about. Sleep, I think, is crucial. I will get extra sleep knowing my body is fighting. I will um, also sometimes take some homeopathic um, acillo uh, um, pellets that I think is a something that's really worked for me that I will take it at the first sign of something. And like, I'm telling you, like I, it never turns into anything. I have been so fortunate, but I also work very hard on it. I also don't Mm -hmm. drink anything other than water. Um, so that helps. I think I'm, you know, I don't drink alcohol. My body's not stressed from other ways. I'm not smoking anything. Um, and I don't do like straight caffeine, like really high levels of caffeine and then reducing the sugar. My body sort of I try to just give it everything it needs to support itself mm-hmm. so that it can fight something. And some people might think that's kind of strict, but you know what? Like your lifestyle needs to be, not just you, for your children, yeah. needs to be a little strict yeah. um, to make sure that you can give them the best opportunities. So the vitamin C pro- protocol we can talk uh, about next if whenever you're, don't, yeah. you're done with vitamin D. But if you don't take away anything else from this episode... You guys, vitamin D, get yeah. on it. It is such a game changer for immune system strength and allowing your body to do what it needs to do and mm-hmm. to not just have a milder version, to not get sick at all. Like every time I feel like I'm about to, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, my kid my kid just had a cold or whatever. I'm like worried. Yeah. As soon as I do my stuff, it's like it's gone and nothing ever happens. And I'm thinking... I did it again. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm always so surprised. Yeah, my, um, my, you know, if I'm starting to get sick protocol is, um, yeah, I will take, I'll take like a, uh, I don't routinely take vitamin D cause I just forget mm-hmm. and I, know, I feel like I should. Um, easy to forget. and, uh, I, I guess I, I would say adults and older kids out there, you can get a blood test done. Like if you're ever getting blood work at a doctor, ask for a vitamin D level. So, you know, if you're, low normal or medium normal or high normal. And you really want to be medium or high normal. Some people are don't very want to be low. low. Yeah. You don't want to be low normal and you especially don't want to be super low. Some people need yeah. 10 to 20,000 a day yeah. to yeah, get so their Yeah. So if you are low, you're right. You need to take 10 to 20,000 units every single day to bring yeah. your level up. Until you balances. need to take it that much for many weeks right. to bring it up. If yeah, not my mom was months. in that situation. Yeah. yeah so I, I don't take vitamin D, but if, if I'm starting to get sick or... Honestly, we give our kid vitamin D, so maybe mm-hmm. once a month I might I might take, you know, 
20, 30, 40, even 50,000 units of vitamin D once a month because I, I don't take it every day. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. So I take a whole bunch when I remember. And if I'm getting sick, I'll take, I'll take, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 units right. and, and just in a, in a big dose. Um, I will take uh, vitamin C. Um, and for me, I like echinacea. Uh, I learned about echinacea from a, from a, a uh, herb, herbologist or herbalist, you know, herbalist uh, someone who did a lot of research on it many years ago. And I basically take like double the dose that it says on the bottle to take. I take like double the dose twice a day for two days. And then I'll take the regular dose every day until I feel better. Uh-huh. But I don't take it all the time. It's not a, a daily preventive. It's just, right. you know, if, if, if I get a sore throat coming on or a little runny nose or something, yeah, a bunch of vitamin C. I'll take like 1,000 or 2,000 vitamin C twice a day. I'll take the echinacea twice a day, double dose. I'll, I'll down a bunch of vitamin uh, D. And then I'll, I'll take like... cut off sugar, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, you know what? I will... I'll try. Oh. I'll, I'll, con- I'll consciously think about that. Yes, okay. yes. And I might, I might not have alcohol for you know for a number of days. Like during that, I won't. You know, I'll stay away from that. And so, yeah, I, I do feel like I need my body to be able to recover. I don't get more sleep. You don't because I don't feel like I. I don't sleep more. Like if I try to sleep more, I don't sleep more. I don't like either. I, I'm not but I give my body the opportunity, <laughs> though. Okay. All right. I, I would. And by sleeping more, I mean going yeah. to bed earlier, yeah. not sleeping yeah, in later I, since that's not an option. Yeah, but I don't. I don't like to you know treat the fevers, of course, yeah. with Tylenol or ibuprofen. I can't remember the um, last time I had a fever. Yeah. I mean, I, and I'll also take a fruit and vegetable supplement that I, I still I, I forget to take every day. But if I am getting sick, I'll take like like double or triple Extra, that, mm-hmm. you know, a whole bunch of that. So yeah, I'll load myself up um, and I feel like I get through illnesses so fast. I'm barely sick. And you're exposed to them Yeah, I'm lot. exposed all the time. And and so I barely feel like I uh, – my illnesses just go away very, very quickly under that protocol. Um, I will say honestly on most regular days, just in day-to-day life, I'm not taking a daily supplement. Yeah. I feel – I've never taken a multivitamin. Um, if, if I'm on the ball of trying to like maintain the good health, I will take a fruit and vegetable supplement and I'll try to take vitamin D, but I just, I always forget. Yeah. I always forget. So, um, but yeah, d- definitely uh, vitamin C, echinacea, vitamin D. I think that's the key. People also talk about, um, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, herb, uh, elderberry, mm-hmm. I think is a pretty popular herb, especially for the flu. Because of the vitamin C. Specifically, uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. elderberry extract. I think, yeah, I hear good things about that, but I, I personally have elderberry not Elderberry syrup. Yeah, I've taken made it. it. I've made yeah. it several batches for my kids. Oh, cool. Um, cool. It's right. very high in vitamin C, very potent in allowing the body to fight things off. They said yes, specifically relating to the flu. But there's a difference, so, so that you guys know, there's a difference between preventative immune care right. and while you're sick, immune care. Right. Because those are two very different things. Um, again, I look at vitamin D as the only real preventative okay. that you're keeping as a daily thing yeah. Yeah. Uh, or every couple yeah, days. Yeah, and I would say weekly. like if you're eating a lot of raw fruits and vegetables, that's daily prevention as well. Oh, of or, course. Or, or so taking I mean, a supplement. Yeah, a good, having, good having a good diet right. and not having yeah. sugar is kind of yeah. like also, and having yeah. good sleep. Yeah. This is the other thing that yeah. I would stand here. I think sleep yeah. is crucial. I'm sure but, everybody. But we'll talk about vitamin C. What, what yeah, specifically? About, so the vitamin C protocol is a different thing than just taking extra vitamin C. Um, it's a different kind of vitamin C and it's a different usage of vitamin C. And you would use it not as a preventative. You would use it when your body's under attack. And so I've seen, I mean, you can Google search vitamin C protocol. I know Dr. Suzanne Humphreys talks about this. This is one of the main things she talks about with respiratory infections, including things like whooping cough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I send a lot of patients to Dr. Suzanne Humphreys vitamin C protocol website. Website, right. Yeah, it's very informative. Yeah. The, and, and even if you don't have a serious respiratory infection, but of course, especially if you do, it is crucial. I have personally done testimonies on vitamin C protocol because I've seen such a difference in how my kids responded to illness. Like for example, around January, the very beginning of January, end of December, this last holiday season, they both got what I would classify as the flu. It wasn't tested, but something like that, flu-like or a flu. 
And this is one of those things that everybody says, you're going to have to go to the ER for this. This is going to urgent care. This is going to be very serious. And that you get a little nervous because this is a, not just a cold. And the reason I knew it wasn't a cold is because there was a fever. And my kids never get fevers. I don't ever get fevers either. Mm-hmm. And um, in fact, when I got really sick that last time, a year and a half ago, uh, I didn't get a fever even with that. I don't get fevers often. It's not part of my traditional illness um, pattern that I've ever experienced. And uh, serenity either. And so she had, when she had a fever, this is when she gets relaxed and she's not often relaxed. Um, and so that's when I knew something was going on. And so right away I was like, Oh no, I've heard everybody around having this, this is going around. And a lot of kids are getting sick, getting the flu, whatever. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Okay. The first thing I did was I'm going to start the vitamin C protocol. And the vitamin C protocol is using a very specific kind of vitamin C. It's a powdered vitamin C. It is not... Some people use um, um, vitamin C that is a um, the as- asorbate, no, ascorbic acid um, vitamin C, which is a powder that tastes like citrus. You know, it's sour. But sodium asorb- <clears throat> asorbate, which is what um, Suzanne Humphreys mentioned. Sodium asorbate. Sodium asorbate. And that's A-S-C-O-R-B-A-T-A, if you're listening. Uh, Nutribiotic is the the company she recommends, and I get that on Amazon. It tastes like a little bit salty. It it doesn't have a sour mm. orange taste, so you can add it to a lot of things for your kids to get it down, like a yogurt or like um, an applesauce or something like that. And so sodium asorbate, you would take the dosing, and she has all the information on dosing on her website. But like for my kids, it might be three quarters of a teaspoon, and I would put it in a small amount of liquid. Sometimes I do it in like a like a kombucha or like a, some type of stronger kind of juice with a greens powder. So it has already a nice flavor, like a strong flavor. So you don't really notice the salt. And, and what I started doing was putting it in her bottle of water and she'd sip on it all day long. And guess what? No change, no results, didn't do anything. And this is what I did for the, when she was two years old and three years old. It wasn't until she was four that I really started following the protocol, which is high dosing in small amount, like in a small amount of liquid, it's almost like you're having a shot of this high vitamin C in your system, and it has to be every couple hours. You cannot just have somebody sipping on it all throughout the day. It will, and in my experience, it will not make a difference. And so, uh, maybe about three quarters of a teaspoon, or if you're an adult, you might be at a, already a, a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, and you're putting that in maybe an ounce or two of juice, applesauce, yogurt, liquid, whatever, and you want to get it into their system right away. And every two hours, you're doing the same thing. And you're doing, the amount isn't as important as what you're seeing in their body, because the whole purpose of vitamin C protocol is to take enough vitamin C that you get to bowel tolerance, bowel tolerance. Okay. When your child starts to have loose stools or you as an adult, same thing. Not when you're having diarrhea or some serious problem we're talking about before it gets there, you start, your body is telling you that you're at the level of vitamin C before it becomes uh, an issue in, you know, as through your digestion. So you want to hit that point and then you back off just slightly from that point. And you want to maintain this protocol during the acute portion of this illness. So the acute portion of this illness may be one day, two days, three days, and then you can back off from that point when they still have some symptoms, knowing this absolutely 100% shortens the duration of an illness. It's not going to stop the illness, but it is really going to make it milder and make it shorter. And I noticed, so as my daughter had that two days of flu, I'm going, oh my gosh, what am I in for? Right. And it was like three more days after that and nothing. And the biggest thing, the other thing I add to this is NAC, uh, which I think is really important, especially for a respiratory or bronchial cough. When you hear kids that have the flu and they have this like extended, you know, productive cough, uh, like a congestion cough, uh, that is the real risk of turning into something when that fluid stays there and does not eliminate itself from the body, Mm -hmm. right? Especially kids don't necessarily know how to cough well. They're not eliminating mucus and things well. And so whenever I hear any kind of um, congestion in the chest, I'm going, okay, right away I get on NAC. That's the other, yeah. the uh, other wonder supplement. Yeah, it's a N-acetylcysteine. Mm-hmm. It's like an, it's basically, I think it mostly an antioxidant, like Part sort of, the of its properties. Or um, it, it's yeah. very, very, it's, and there's a lot of new research and data on it. So look it up. You'll see there are a lot of ways to utilize this, even for children. They do make it in the powder if your children do not swallow, um, capsules. 
Um, but NAC for cough specifically, if you feel okay. anything in the, I wouldn't take it for like a cold. I, I haven't found, it's really a respiratory specific type of thing okay. that, that, that I've read about. But the vitamin C protocol, you can still use that for a cold. You can use that if you're starting to feel sick because your kid just had a cold. Okay. It's gone through the house and you're, you're feeling like, I got the scratchy throat. And then you start taking that even for a day of every two hours, you put a little bit in water when you think about it and you just down it really quickly because it just tastes like salt water. Um, and before you know it, your body does not move on through hmm. the process. Okay. It's, it's pretty amazing. In fact, Last time Serena had a cold, I did it, and I was about to sing. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, this is the wrong time for me yeah, yeah. to have to get sick, and I stopped it. You did okay. Yeah, and I cool. did okay. Awesome. And so I would say vitamin D is a preventative, but once you are sick with any type of sickness, I would, unless it's a stomach bug, because then you don't want to be adding high doses of vitamin C to make your stomach sensitive. Right, right. But outside of that, any other illness, I would get started on vitamin C, and for children as well, right away, especially you got a fever, you got a respiratory thing, get on that. Now, you might also be seeing your doctor, and there might be something else that they're adding to this, but this type of protocol, I think, will keep most people from needing to, see, needing to see the doctor. It will keep things that could have been very serious turned into a much milder version, yeah. and it will allow your child to get over this faster, being able to heal faster. And um, and it has really worked wonders in our household. And probably the main reason why you don't hear me messaging <laughs> you about illness anymore yeah. is because I yeah. learned about, I actually learned about it after I was sick a year and a half ago. Yeah. And as soon as I learned about it, I was like, oh my God, okay, in the future, this is what I'm doing. And that's what I've been doing for my kids. And it has worked so unbelievably well. And the NAC together, it's a power combo. I'm telling you, the okay. two of these things together are amazing and really help for the strong stuff. The stuff you think, like, this is not just a cold. I can't just take some vitamins yeah. for this one. Yeah. These two things together used correctly, I feel are very, very uh, impactful okay. and make a difference. And right. um, I would suggest them for everyone. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, I, I feel at such a disadvantage, like, you know, even though I'm a doctor, you know, of course you guys all know, they don't teach us any of this stuff in, in, in medical school and in training. And, you know, they, we don't learn any of these natural remedies. And, and so I've, I've basically have spent my career learning from patients, yeah, your patients yeah. who, who know this. Like I figure out who my smartest patients are and I learn from them and then I read the information that they're telling me about. Yeah, you and go then verify I, it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, and then I try to myself and my family and, and, uh, and I've, I've not, uh, I've not tried NAC. Oh, um, well you don't get so respiratory I, infections right, right. often. You know, right? honestly, I don't, I don't think I can't even remember last time I actually had a cough. Yeah. Um, but my patients certainly do, yes. and so I'm going I'm to have to look at NAC a little more more closely. There's actual science, like okay. real science. What, like, what kind of it. NAC do you use? I use Jero, the company Jero. Okay. I get oh, it on Jero Amazon. makes the, yeah. yeah, they make a lot of stuff. Yes, they yeah. do. Okay, they're cool. a good right. supplement company. I and okay. I get directly again from Amazon. Uh, it's in a red bottle, and okay. I was advised this by somebody else who used to be, have bronchitis on a regular basis. Okay. She started taking this, and she hasn't had bronchitis in 15 years. Okay, cool. and so this was unknown to me as well a couple of years ago. And then I started doing research on NAC, and now I keep seeing new information pop up about NAC. A lot of people yeah. don't know about it. It's definitely not a mainstream supplement. But it makes such a difference specifically when you've got that pain in your chest yeah. where you go, oh, my God, okay. this is going to turn into a bad cough or this is going to be one of those things that lingers. Like it is a great yeah. way to stop And that. again, and you're not just – you're not suppressing your cough. You're not – it's not right. like stopping the cough as a suppressant. It's helping to heal and like get the clear the stuff tissue. out. It's amazing yeah. Yeah. the so stuff it does. And that's yeah. what you need to do. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, your kid might cough for a day or two. You want them to cough mm -hmm. for a day or two because they need to get the stuff out. Right. And the NAC. Yes, yeah, so I appreciate that. I'll have to look more into that. And then the right. last things I would say, of course, that we've already kind of touched on is this idea of stress and sleep and these other factors mm -hmm. that make a difference in your immune system strength. And I picked out this article from Harvard Medical School, and I just want to read a few things to end our episode here. Um that I find really interesting. So it says, how to boost your immune system. Okay, this is advice from Harvard Medical School, Harvard Health Publishing. And this is 2018. And it says, what can you do to boost your immune system? How interesting is this? Tell me. It says, the immune system is... Okay, so it says, the idea of boosting your immune system is enticing, but the ability to do so has proved elusive for several reasons. The immune system is precisely that, 
a system, not a single entity. To function well, it requires balance and harmony. There is still much that researchers don't know about the intricacies and the interconnectedness of the immune system. Yeah. And I could not read that <laughs> without being like, I know. <laughs> exactly. That's our point. I know. <laughs> That's our point. Yeah. Literally, yeah. vaccines go into your body to stimulate your immune system with several doses from several vaccines at, a, at all the same time. They don't know what this is doing to our body because they don't even right. know how our immune system works. Harvard right. just told you. They don't yeah. even know. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and like they said, it's balance. It's an entire system. It, so if you is. are artificially going to influence your immune system in one way. Thank you. It, it's not just only doing that to you. It's, you're not only getting IgG antibodies, you know, stimulated to protect you against measles. You are you are doing something to the entire system in ways we yes. totally do not understand. Exactly. And sadly, researchers feel like we don't need to understand anything else it's doing because all we need is a disease, disease protection. Who cares if it's doing something else to us? And, and but they said, and I care. Of course, you and should I think, care. I think most people care. And autoimmunity and all these things that we're seeing pop up have an exact have exactly to do with this aspect of we yeah. we we put this in your body for this reason, but this popped up. Right. And this was triggered it's part and this of the was system. turned on because it's yeah. part of a system. So yeah. I'm thinking even Harvard understands that, yeah. right? And then they continue to say every part of your body, including your immune system, functions better. I'm not making this up. Functions better when protected from environmental assaults. Hmm. All right. Every part of your body, including your immune system, works better when it is protected from these environmental assaults. To, to what assaults are you referring to, Melissa? I don't know. Maybe potentially these toxins that are injected into our body by the um, dozens of doses. The idea that you understand your immune system is dependent on this balance and is sensitive to outside factors. What is the most common outside factor that children are experiencing early on directly into their body on a high level are going to be these types of vaccines, you know, the right, vaccines. Right. And, and I, I've always, I often will say wherever I get the chance is, yeah, even though vaccines may work in certain ways, um, I truly do feel like there's, there's a trade-off. Mm. You are accepting, say, measles protection from the vaccine or chickenpox protection or polio protection, but there's a trade-off in that I feel like they are honestly also making other aspects of your immune system less healthy and less functional because you've thrown off the natural balance. Or trigger genetic things right. that are right. la so, latent. Yeah, so again, we're not saying you, you therefore should not do vaccines. What I'm saying is, sure, it would be great if we could figure out how to get vaccines in a way that didn't create those those negative uh, effects on our immune system um, to you know, throw off the balance. Anyway, g yeah, go ahead. What else? And then does it says, say? it says, attempting to boost the cells of your immune system is especially complicated because there are so many different kinds of cells in the immune system that respond to so many different microbes in so many different ways. Like mm. they're talking about how complicated the immune system is and how it responds so differently. This is exactly why you need to take care when introducing an immune system activation into children by the dozens. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what right. we've been saying, but they're right. not even realizing it's about oh, right, vaccines, right? right? Yeah. And they say um, there are still relatively few studies of the effects of nutrition on the immune system of humans, and even fewer studies that tie the effects of nutrition directly to the development compared to the treatment of disease. So they're not even studying food as it relates to disease. How could they possibly really have done the research on the long-term and cumulative effects of activating the immune system so frequently um, in right. children and infants right. and expecting, expecting no problems to right. arise, right? right? Yeah. And then um, they go on to talk about stress, which is something that we all know. And stress is not just stress in your work, but, you know, adrenal fatigue that can come from not getting enough sleep that can come from a lot of sugar in your diet. Uh, thyroid function can be affected by adrenal fatigue, which can be affected by stress levels. Stress is one of those things that we, we all deal with in today's society because everything is moving so quickly and we're not taking time to replenish. And people think that they're doing okay. They don't realize that there is a slow and chronic 
decrease in their body's ability to handle things until they show yeah. up with some type of infection disease or something right. later on in yeah, life. Yeah, but in stress is probably even more so going to affect your the chronic part of your immune health that could lead to cancer yeah, exactly. and, and, you know, and, you know, neurodegeneration and heart right. disease and other chronic diseases. It's not always just about getting sick. Oh, right. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Chronic things. And so it says for one thing, stress is difficult to, to define what may appear to be a stressful situation for one person is not for another. And I keep thinking, this is just like medicine. This is just like medical interventions. Mm -hmm. Things show up and manifest differently for each child. And what is okay for one is not okay for everyone. And then it says, um, most scientists studying the relationship of stress in the immune system do not, do not study the sudden short-lived stressor. Rather, they try to study the more constant and frequent stressors, like chronic stress, like you were saying. And I'm thinking the vaccine program is the opposite. They study safety based on, does something immediately happen right now in the next right. day or two? Right. They're not looking at the chronic and right. the more long-term cumulative effects that can happen, which is what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. And it says, it talks about how it's hard to perform controlled experiments on human beings uh, because that control is just not possible. There are so many other things happening to the person at the time measurements are being taken. And that's my point. This is why you cannot say the science is settled. Right. This is why you cannot right. say we've shown that vaccines are safe because it does not give you the whole picture. And you know what does give you the whole picture? The stories that we keep hearing and seeing. And my thing is, if, if that were just the only thing you were looking at, wouldn't that be enough to make you say, let's dig further? Let's mm -hmm. go further and find out more because clearly something's going wrong. Maybe your vaccine safety test didn't show it in those first four days, but and you're not testing all the combinations, you're not testing long-term, but something's going wrong and our children are the proof of that. Right. So when you see it, you know it's happening. These anecdotes, like we say, are eventually data after enough of them. That should be enough to go, we need to study this completely differently, or we need to look at this differently, or we need to look at it at all, which is kind of right. what they're not right. doing. And, and I'm just laughing that they're writing about studying the immune system and nutrition, and they're doing all this research on the long-term chronic blah, blah, blah about this. And I'm thinking... All the they, while. Yeah, they'll totally leave vaccines out of that study. It won't even be here. won't even be in there because it's not needed, apparently. And then it does finally say that part of the way they can get more complete answers about the immune system and if lifestyle factors into this is they said looking at the human genome and sequencing. And they said now with this biomedical technology, it allows scientists to look simultaneously at gene sequences and how they turn on and off based on response to specific physiological conditions. This is exactly what we're saying. Exactly what we're saying is Things are getting turned on and off based on these genetic sequences with these environmental assaults, and vaccines are mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. One of them. So they cannot keep excluding them from this conversation on overall health. But they will. But they will. <laughs> and they are. Yes, yes. And that's yeah. what they've been doing. Yeah. And this, and yeah. this, and that was the end of that article. Yeah. That this is how to boost your immune system. Harvard um, Health Publishing. Yeah, we'll put links to that. But um, I, I have a question. I mean, a lot of people talk about probiotics. And um, I will say I've never routinely taken a probiotic. Um, I my my opinion on probiotics is I mean there's so many probiotic like products you can mm -hmm. buy like capsules and liquid and, and whatever, and I don't I really don't know of any good solid research that has ever proven an artificially like you know processed probiotic you know, does amazing things for you. I mean, there, there's some research that may show it and a lot of people are big fans of probiotics. But to me, I would imagine that that it would make more sense to eat probiotic-rich foods. I agree. If you're going to utilize probiotics routinely and try to get a lot of benefit from them. And that's why, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about probiotic foods. And I think that probably is way more key than supplementing with a probiotic. I, I think so too. Um, what, do you, what do you do for probiotics? We do uh, kraut. Mm -hmm. which is like fermented cabbage, Sauerkraut? people that don't know. Yeah. Uh, yes, but but freshly fermented, so okay. not the kind that's been sitting in a jar for a long time. Okay. Uh, just it's really powerful. You can get these in natural food stores. 
Um, and then fermented yogurts that are naturally fermented, like coconut yogurts and things. Okay. Um, that's about the extent the of kefir, fermented foods. Kefir or kefir? I don't do that, okay. uh, but I know that that's there because I right. usually kefir's usually done with a milk based right. uh, yogurt, which we don't do um, milk based yogurts. So, but they do make it at certain places like Fermentation Farm. You can get yeah. coconut yogurt that has using a starter, mm-hmm. um, and I think they might even have a coconut kefir. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, fermented. I think kraut is a perfect example. It's really easy thing to eat to put on the side of your plate for each meal kids like it because it tastes like pickles um, but it's not added with vinegar like a pickle would be okay. it's actually fermented naturally which creates the sourness and of you it. buy it you can you buy it at it? like whole you can make it but it takes like a couple months to sort of get okay. those okay. get that cabbage to the right place or maybe not a couple months okay. that could be a little longer but uh, it's a, might be a little shorter than that in the end but I go to you know sprouts has there's a great company um, that makes a probiotic oh my god what's its name I love this company and I love their caraway they, it has caraway seeds in it and it's mm-hmm. so yum uh, I forget the company name but they have it at you know mothers and whole foods it's a and crowd sprouts. it's, it's a, a crowd okay. and they have hmm. several different flavors they've okay. been flavored different ways and you know my kids have always liked that i've gotten them used to it at a young age where this is a taste it tastes like a pickle i used to love pickles as a kid yeah, yeah me too um, i love them yeah and so that taste is a, a familiar and kind of it's a good taste and you don't need a lot but from what i've heard a tablespoon of fresh um, kraut has like 20 times the amount of probiotics that you can get in a probiotic supplement. Wow. And lots of and different species. Is there a lot of different species it's, in there? Do you uh, know? Yeah. Or? I mean, okay. uh, from what I understand, it's, it's more, um, diverse and it's, okay. it's just right. more populated. Right. And so, and, and I think anything in natural food is going to be better. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think we're so into supplements. Yeah. You have to buy something and that's, but I mean, you know, that's, uh, yeah, I agree. It's always going to be better coming from food. And I think one thing I often will tell my patients, if if they're really struggling and they're limiting sugar, they're doing things right, but mm. things are still not going well, I will tell people to kind of go like uh, like paleo yeah. style, where you're actually then lowering the 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 uh, grain-based carbs and you're lowering the, the cow's milk product-based carbs, um, because even that sometimes is too much for a system to handle. But most people sh- shouldn't have to do that mm-hmm. in any extreme way, but but that can be an, an additional well, step. And I think the takeaway there is if your body is working hard to digest, then that's taking away energy it should be using to keep you healthy and be able to repair cells and things like that. So if your body is working too dif- – it's yeah. too difficult for your body yeah. to have to uh, always be focusing on what you're putting in the stomach and it's always having to work on that, then it's not available to help you on this other front. Yeah. And so th- why diet would be important and – dairy or, or carbohydrates for some people, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to process that digestion. Yeah. And so okay. you want to eliminate the amount of work your body has to do, especially even when you are sick. That's why I'm a big believer in like, you're sick, you need to start eating really nutrient dense food, you know, like vegetable soups, whole vegetables that are steamed and cooked and easy to digest food. So your body can go, okay, I'm not going to work hard on the digestion right now. I'm going to work hard on healing. And that's something our body always has to do. Another reason why sleep is so important, healing yeah. and being preventative is is so important because you're exposed to these things from all different sources. It's not just flu season time when you get sick. It's not just back to school time or it's not just certain time. It's any time. And you want to keep your body in the best position to be able to fight yeah. any illness that comes your way, including yeah. things that come that are, you know, yeah. vaccine um What's the word vaccine? Uh, targeted, targeted illnesses. Yes, I know, I know, I know. And 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 I think you and I we're not pretending like we know everything there is to oh, know. Oh, there's about, so about much us. more I mean, than this. There is, yeah, there are tons out there. What I was curious, I guess, yeah, I was mainly hearing you. Know, what do you do uh, yeah. you know, on a personal level? Because I respect your your experience on that and your your knowledge. And then I sort of I kind of I basically shared what I tell my patients you yeah. know, when things aren't going right and. And I mean, we, you, you have to, in general, you have to try to do your best to avoid antibiotics as yes. best you can. I mean, that, that goes back that's to so the key. gut. Right, right. You want to keep your gut important. super healthy. Um, I think, I mean, a, a lot of people listening to this, like already have kids, their kids are kind of, you know, several years old and they're, it's not like they're all starting right at the beginning. And so we've tried to maybe talk a lot about the things you can do now with your kids who are already children. But I mean, any of you who have infants, um, or you're starting off, um, I guess I just want to really briefly say I feel like getting the absolute best start in life is very important where it comes to, you know, uh, having as natural a childbirth as you feel, you know, capable of achieving 
um, trying to... Ladies, you can do it. Yes. I just want to tell you, I know it's intimidating. And if you've not done it before and you have another baby coming up or you have a friend who's having a baby, I know it's intimidating and I know it's it's scary, but you can do it. Yeah, you did. You did. I did it, it twice yeah. and right. I and I would never regret that decision. Yeah. And and uh, trying your best in any way possible to avoid antibiotics during labor, um, avoid antibiotic exposures, antibiotic exposures to the newborn babies. I feel like you you don't need to put you know the antibiotic ointment in baby's eyes oh, I and, so unless you uh, unless mom has chlamydia or gonorrhea. They um, do that with Serenity without right. asking yeah, me because yeah. I was just at uh, the hospital and I oh I'm so annoyed. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like things. yeah you you don't want to scrub the baby clean with a hospital bath I with know. a disinfectant wash. Uh, I mean you, you have your baby. Let the baby be. Let yes. all those natural germs that come from the mom, all that needs to get into your baby because that's mm. what builds the foundation of the immune system. So then you, you don't mess it up with antibiotics. Right. You, uh, you introduce uh, you know, colostrum and breastfeeding. You avoid, avoid any artificial breast milk substitutes unless it's completely medically indicated. And and then and then you know, when your kid gets sick when they're a few months old or six months old, you don't do antibiotics unless it's really really important. And that whole key to starting life that way, I think, is so critical. Yeah. I mean, a lot of you are past that, and if you didn't have that, that's okay. You, you're you're going to work on it in different ways. But anyone who has the ability to start off in those right ways, and then if 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 you if it gets messed up along the way because of some sort of serious medical problem, then you really, you know, ask for advice from a natural practitioner mm. or friends that, you know, or you, holistic MD. Yeah, you, you mm-hmm. rebuild the immune system using some of the things we've talked about, but, but other things. It's never that, that too people, late. That's right. absolutely true. Exactly. It's never too late to kind of approach this in a different way and make those small changes. I mean, I know with my kids, like Serenity was not sick, I think until she was two. That was the mm-hmm. first time she was sick and justice was almost three. So that's a long time to go being yeah. exposed to all sorts of things to never get sick. And I think a big testament to that is diet, food, supplementation, yeah. breastfeeding, um, and also sleep. My sleep routine with them is very yes. rigid, yeah. um, but it's also <laughs> yeah. worked for them yeah. in the way to give them that foundation. But all of those things, even if you didn't do that in the early stage, you can work towards that. And even if your kids eight, nine, ten, you can get a better sleep routine for them. You can work on reducing sugars for them. Mm-hmm. You can work on not giving fever reducers if you don't need to. Mm-hmm. And all and all the other things work together to make your child not as sick to need the fever reducers. So it actually all works together to maintain that healthier whole body child. Yeah. yeah. And I forgot, let, let me, I, I didn't emphasize it, but, <laughs> um, but I've been back to the newborn situation. You, I, I'm now encouraging parents to not even give the babies uh, a, a bath, you know, even for, for several days. Yeah. Let that vernix stay I did that there. with justice. Yeah. And let, let, yeah. It, let, let all those natural germs stay on there. And cause that, again, that is an important start to life. And I, 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 I glossed over that too, too much, but oh my gosh, you see the old like hospital, nurse training videos of the nurse. I've seen this video of a nurse literally holding a newborn baby over a sink. Water's running over the baby and she has a scrub brush with like medical soap, just, just like polishing the baby. That's not that old. That happened to Serenity. Oh oh no. Yes. I mean, this was just 2013 here in Orange County. Because they think a sterile baby is a healthy baby. And I know that couldn't be the, you know, farther from the truth. You know, uh, a baby needs natural germs play outside get dirty, get natural germs from the environment. Um, it's all very important. Uh, so you create a good, healthy microbiome. And I will say the vitamin D thing you're mentioning, being outside, not only is it outside to get that sunshine, but you know what you'll do when you're outside? You'll play yes. and you'll move and yeah. you'll have circulation yeah. and exercise. And that's yeah. great for children too, because yeah. that's good for your lymphatic system. You want to have ways to keep your body moving and the blood flowing. Yeah, and and you post on Facebook so so often you guys are out on nature walks and nature trails. You're not just going to the park and playing on the playground. You are Not if I can help it. You're in nature. Your kids are walking around in bushes, climbing on rocks, picking up things. Hopefully, putting things in their mouths you know, so they could. I mean, again, you get all these, all this natural outdoor exposure. You're right. You're moving. You're happier. You're mentally happier because you're out there in the environment. And you know, parents, get out there. Just go on these nature walks. I mean, you can't. Stress and we're that talking enough. like an hour, two hours. Yeah. My big reason when I first had kids, um, I'm like, 
I'm not going to playgrounds. One, playgrounds are full of germy kids often. Okay. <laughs> and secondly, there's always a potential to get hurt okay. because you're, you're climbing up on things and I, you have to be like right next to them every right. five seconds. And I sometimes like to be able to feel like I can just breathe for a second. Okay. So yeah. we would go to big open grass fields because okay. then I knew even if she's just learning to walk, she can run around here and there's no real danger for her. Yeah. So that allowed me to breathe a little right. better. And there weren't a lot of people around. So that was awesome too, I, I thought. And then um, we would stay for an hour, two hours. You know, she's looking at the gra- the blades of grass. She's looking at the sticks, like the pine cones. That became the interest and the focus. And I'm a big lover of nature. Uh, you know, the decoration in my house are trees and birds. I love trees so much. And I really wanted to pass on a love for nature for her. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we've continued to do. And I did that with justice. Now we take these long walks because I want her to be content for two hours in nature. Yes. I want her to see the beauty in every single, a different pattern of every leaf and the different color greens that are there and the flowers and all the twigs and all the natural objects, which is what's so great in a holistic, you know, education is that focus it's not only good for touching the dirt and getting exposure to these things like you're saying, it's good for the mind yes. because yeah. she does not need to be entertained and constantly stimulated and she does not have screens in front of her and she is not watching TV inside. She's getting access to fresh air, access to vitamin D, access to natural objects, the different sensation, the touching, the all that tactile experience. And she's learning to appreciate the beauty of nature and she's learning to slow down. And in when yeah. everything is so busy and we're so stressed as parents and we're always going, I've got this and then I've got this and this appointment and I'm multitasking. And it is a great way for the parent also to check out and be able to just be in the present moment and take these long walks, look at the different, feel the different rocks. This rock is smooth. This rock yeah, is yeah. rough. Like yeah. all of that stuff I think is so good for them on a mental level. Yeah. And that's in part addition, of the healthy immune system. And it does. Yeah. It factors in. I mean, yeah. this is why it's so important to look at the child on the whole child mm-hmm. basis. And this is why it's so important to not just treat illness topically, like, I'm going to give you a medication for this. Oh, you have the flu. Here's Tamiflu. Right. Oh, you have a fever. Here's fever reducer. We are looking right. at this entire argument of how to keep a healthy child and raise a healthy child. We're looking at it wrong. Yeah, We are trying to treat the disease instead of prevent the, uh, prevent them. Yes. We are not t- looking at medicine the right way. And our children, how they start is how they finish, right? And yeah. we want to give them that foundation yeah. to move through life as healthy adults as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you don't want to turn into a, an adult with chronic illness who's on three different kinds of medication to get by. Right. You, ad- exactly. Ideally, you'd be medication-free. Yeah. And there'd be no prescriptions that you have to rely on I know. and that you're and able that, to use. That's such a foreign concept to today's elderly I people. can't, I know yeah. I, it yeah. is. And I've never been on a prescription medication yeah. for a long period of time. I had thyroid medication for a period and I just sort of stopped taking that, but, um, which I don't know if that was the best idea, but the, the idea that you need to be healthy with yeah. medication is what pharmaceutical companies push right. this they idea, like yeah. the commercials. Remember, are you feeling unhappy? <laughs> I wasn't, but I, I maybe am now, I know. Are you ever tired? Like, oh my gosh, does, I am right, tired. <laughs> does life ever get you down? It's like, well, yes, that's part of normal life. But what the pharmaceutical company wants you to believe is something's wrong with you and yeah. we're going to help you fix it. Yeah. And so we yeah. get, I think that's part of why people aren't worried about 69 doses or some people don't, they're not as worried as they should be about how high our vaccine schedule is because mm-hmm. they think more medicine equals better. Yeah. We have more vaccines. So we should use them. How thankful we are for this more medicine. Medicine saves us. Medicine cures us. Instead of looking at health from an inside out, like we've always talked about, and we'll probably yeah. get a chance to do a second episode, I yeah. think, on this. Because yeah, there's so many. Yeah, there's, I, I'd be curious, maybe like a, a way a to research treat episode. a bunch of other things naturally or yeah. different illnesses. But um, do you have a thing, too? I do. Yeah. How far away is it? Far enough away. Okay. Well, we should wrap this up. Then, we will. So. We will, but we have so much more to bring you yeah. and just not enough time to do it, guys. Um, I know. So I apologize for that, but we will get to it. Yeah, when and we, we have get a, yeah, to a couple. Of, yeah, I, I totally have this great topic. I know. This had this thing happen to Two me in this topics. office yesterday that was actually very serious, very concerning. I actually saw a, a vaccine reaction that that's on the list of vaccine injury compensation reactions. Like a kid in front of me had a had a severe reaction and 
and and, and we'll talk about tell, it. tell that yeah. story and, and talk about what people need to know about these reactions and how to identify them and what to do when when you have one. So we've got that's that coming, coming up. up. Yeah, yeah, hopefully next week we'll be able to yeah. figure out some time to finish that and a couple yeah. of d- other studies that we have going because we like to bring you the data, the yes. real data. But we also like to talk about yeah. all these things. And you know what? Yeah. We've heard lots of reviews asking for an immunity based. Um, yeah. Uh, episode. So we have right, been waiting yeah, on this. And this was, I think, not so much on the scientific level. This no. was like the personal, which I think we are. And uh, and, and, yeah. and next episode, we can take this to find some data showing backing up exactly what we mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that for a part two on immunity. Um, but anyway, so much always yeah. to talk about. So little time. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks you guys for uh, continuing to come back. We appreciate it. We truly truly deeply appreciate the uh the listening so thank you very much for that and the and the positive feedback yes. that's my favorite part no, and the no negative one, feedback no 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 <laughs> erase what he just said no <laughs> no but i mean it's not yeah, just that yeah. they're listening it's that they're listening and they love it yeah that is great that's great we and we love you guys back yeah. well guys we will see you later Enjoy your day. Right. Get outside. Get outside (laughs) and play. Hopefully you're listening to this podcast while you're walking through nature. With your child. Yes. (laughs) While you have a natural snack for them that does not involve traditional sugars. Okay. And, and we should oh, we should post some recipes sometime. Maybe we can do that somewhere to give some people some No, ideas. I told you you need to bring in what oh. you make so I can test it. <laughs> oh, before you so, can give the uh, yeah, Dr. Bob approved know, exactly. chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Dr. Bob approved blueberry muffins. Okay, I got it. All right. Take care, guys. <laughs>